the Lost Wood, a mysterious secluded area of Artonia where only a select few creatures can survive, let alone dominate. Here, an unusual species of fern flourishes with formidable defense mechanism that challenges an intruder venturing into its domain. This shadowy forest has become the ultimate proving ground where only the most resilient can adapt and evolve to become unmatched within its borders. But in this relentless battle for survival, who will emerge victorious? The iconic plant that forms the backbone of life in the lost wood is none other than Ceromethalum acidophyta, or the acid fern. Its name, derived from a blend of ancient words, tells the story of its survival. Cero traces back to Terodophyta, signaling its deep fern lineage. Metallum, Latin for metal, references its rare ability to absorb and detoxify heavy metals from the soil. Finally, Acidophyta, Greek for acid plant, underscore its resilience in highly acidic environment, rising between 8 to 12 meters tall. The acid fern is formidable both in size and design. When it grows as an amphibite on larger trees, it maintains a more controlled height, reaching about 3 to 5 meters. Its fan shaped leaves, dense with fibers, are wax coated to resist acid rain and toxic compounds from both water and air. This wax not only protects it from intense sunlight when it perches in open areas but also preserves its health while growing in the forest canopy. The acid fern's leaves possess specialized metal-absorbing cells, throwing heavy metals from surrounding air, water, and soil. Once absorbed, these metals are trapped within the leaves shielding the rest of the plant from toxicity. Remarkably, the ferns transform these absorbed toxins into chemical defense. It can release acidic mist from its leaves or exude chemical irritants into the air to repel herbivores and insects which suffer metal poisoning or acid burn when attempting to feed on it. This hardy plant thrives in acidic, toxic environments thanks to its rhizome-like root system, which adapts fluidly to both waterlogged and nutrient-poor conditions. When submerged, the fibrous rhizome structure absorbs oxygen from the water surface, preventing the plant from suffocating where well, an internal storage system keeps nutrients circulating even in unstable soil. Additionally, specialized cells within the rhizomes neutralize harmful compounds, converting them into protective elements stored in the leaves or used to release defensive chemicals. Growing epiphytically, the acid fern anchors itself to the branches or trunk of taller trees making use of its rhizomes to draw nutrients from air, rain, and decaying organic matter. It isn't parasitic. Rather, it leverages the structure of larger trees to reach light and space in the upper canopy. When living high above ground, its rhizomes produce aerial roots that dangle from branches, drawing moisture from the air around them. Reproduction is another feature of this resilient fern. It releases spores from large pods located beneath its leaves. Each spore pod is coated with protective metallic compound that shields it from acidic and toxic threats. When the spores are released into the wind, they spread widely, ensuring the fern's continued legacy in Artronia's harsh environment. The acid ferns stands as a rare species capable of thriving in the extreme acidity and heavy metal-laden soils of the lost wood. 
with its remarkable ability to absorb and detoxify harmful substances, this resilient plant purifies both land and water, transforming toxic environments into safer habitats. Its roots extract toxin not only from soil but even from flood waters, making the acid fern a natural purifier that stabilizes its surroundings. Thanks to this detoxifying power, other plant species such as oak tree, giant grass, and blooming mangroves flourish nearby, creating a richer, more diverse ecosystem. When towering trees prosper in this renewed soil, the acid fern adapts by shifting to an epiphytic lifestyle using the vertical layers of the forest to reach light while creating mini habitats on the trunks and branches it inhabits. The fronds of the acid fern, too visually less, are laced with toxic metals and emit an acid mist rendering them inedible to most herbivores. This defense ensures that only the most uniquely adapted creatures, those capable of withstanding metal toxins and acidic humus, dare to consume it. Rising from the ancient lineage of gigantic Ristaitana, Acidophorus palustris, or the swarm grasshopper stand as a colossal survivor in the harsh acidic wilderness of the lost wood. Evolving over a span of 20 million years preceding, this mighty insect has carved out a unique niche in its toxic environments. Its name, Acidophorus, Latin for acid eater reflects its astonishing ability to consume and thrive on acid-rich vegetation. While palustris, meaning swamp, speaks to its habitat preference among the bogs and floodlands of Artronia, stretching 2.5 to 3 meters in length and weighing between 250 to 400 kilograms, the swamp grasshopper boost an exoskeleton of remarkable durability. This thick armor, laced with metal ions, absorbed from the soil and vegetation, gleams with a dull metallic sheen along its back. Its exoskeleton is more than just a defense. It serves as a toxic barrier, storing the absorbed metals and forming a poisonous shield that deters even the most tenacious predators. Its robust, serrated mandibles are another testament to its evolutionary finesse. These powerful jaws can shear through the dense, fibrous fronds of the acid fern, a feat few creatures can accomplish. Equipped with detoxifying enzymes, the grasshopper's mandibles break down the toxic compounds present in the acid fern, allowing it to consume the plant safely. Inside its mouth, specialized glands process the acidic chemicals, storing them in sacs near its thorax, transforming them into a potent weapon. When danger looms, the swarm grasshopper deploys a defensive spray, a toxic mist that can reach up to 5 meters. The spray, infused with acid and heavy metal toxins, corrodes and paralyzes any creature it touches. This acidic mist is a formidable weapon. Deadly to most arthropod predators, smaller and colonies, and even larger animals that mistakenly wander too close. Before releasing its prey, the grasshopper raises its wings and produces a loud clicking sound by rubbing its legs against its thorax, a clear warning to potential threats with the glint of its metallic exoskeleton and the vivid pattern on its wings. The swamp grasshoppers signal its toxicity, effectively deterring would-be attackers. True to its lineage, the swamp grasshopper has hind legs developed for powerful leaps. 
it can bound up to 15 meters in a single jump, escaping predators or reaching the upper fronts of the acid fern. Its claws, sharp and adept at creeping bark or sinking in the soft ground, enable it to navigate the complex terrain of the lost wood. These adaptations help it traverse the swampy landscape where stability is a rare advantage. In the tangled tap of the lost wood of fungal mars, the swamp grasshopper reigns as the only herbivore resilient enough to survive in this acid slick land. Its role as the primary plant controller grants it an invaluable position, consuming the thriving acid fern and preventing their toxic expansion. But despite its imposing size, unique defensive abilities, and acid tolerant physiology, the swamp grasshopper remains on the radar of the Mars apex predator, yet hunting these formidable creatures is a gamble. Predators like the giant springtail and the flower mantis pose the greatest threat to the swamp grasshopper. However, to capture this towering 3 meter long herbivore, these predators must carefully consider its fortified defenses. Adult swamp grasshopper are clad in metallic exoskeleton that rebels like attack and they can unleash an acidic mist capable of corroding and paralyzing opponents in seconds. The giant springtail, with its mighty living attack and powerful bite, is one of the few creatures capable of bringing down a swarm grasshopper. However, taking on a mature grasshopper is no easy feat. A single attack is rarely sufficient. Multiple bites are often necessary to fully subdue the herbivore, but every second in close proximity raises the red of the acidic mist which burn through the springtail's exoskeleton. Consequently, even for such a formidable predator, adult swamp grasshoppers are challenging targets, leading the springtail to favor younger, more vulnerable individuals. For the flower mantis, the odds are even more daunting. Against a fully grown swamp grasshopper, the mantis' ambush attacks are ineffective. The herbivore's sheer size and metal plated armor make it an almost impossible target for the smaller predator. Instead, the flower mantis wisely avoids mature grasshopper altogether, targeting juveniles whose exoskeleton have not yet hardened, and whose acidic mist production remains underdeveloped. The defensive advantage of the swamp grasshopper becomes nearly impenetrable in the shadow of an acid fern. The fern itself emits a continuous acidic mist, blanketing the area in a toxic haze that serves as an additional layer of protection. Predators lingering too long within this fog suffer increasing damage as their outer cell or skin gradually corrode. Even the mighty giant springtail finds itself vulnerable here, making attack on adult grasshopper near the ferns a near suicidal mission. Together, the acid fern and swamp grasshopper form a deadly partnership, a natural alliance that strengthens both plant and herbivore, warding off even the most determined predators. Acid fern with its powerful detoxifying abilities has become a crucial pillar in lost wood, enabling other plant species like the towering oak tree and the vibrant blooming mangroves to thrive. For the Yen Kingdom, this is a significant boon. These trees, flourishing in the detoxified soil, provide nectar and sap, essential sugar sources for the colony. 
but the Yens are acutely aware of the acid fern's defensive acidic mist, a corrosive fog that creates a deadly boundary around it. Foraging near the fern's perimeter requires careful strategy, forcing the Yens to navigate this hostile terrain with precision. To minimize risk, the Yens avoid venturing too close to the fern choosing instead to forage around it, keeping a vigilant eye on both prey and predators in the vicinity. This self-imposed boundary not only protects the ants from acidic mist burn, but also creates a natural buffer around the fern, allowing it to detoxify the soil undisturbed. Until it may limit their foraging grounds, the ants have discovered an unlikely advantage. The scorched remains of creatures that fall victim to the fern's mist. The fallen insect, scorched or weakened by exposure, provide easy scavenging opportunities, allowing the ants to harvest meals with minimal risk. Swarm grasshopper, however, present a different kind of challenge for the colony. These herbivore have become a prime target, so the enormous 3 meter long adults require a coordinated effort to bring down. Facing a fully grown swarm grasshopper means mobilizing an entire legion of warriors. They swarm from all angles, relentlessly harassing their prey, gradually exhausting it with waves of attacks. Yet its encounter comes at high cost. The grasshopper's acidic mist claims numerous and warriors. It sacrifice in seeing them closer to victory against the towering insect. But when the swamp grasshopper lingers near an acidic fern, the colony wisely retreats, fighting within the acidic mist radius of both creatures would be a death sentence for too many soldiers as the grasshopper's defense will be fortified by the fern's natural defense. Instead, the ants bide their time seizing opportunities only when the towering grasshopper ventures far enough from the protective acid fog of the fern. Through careful adaptation, the ant kingdom has come to master the harsh territory of lost wood they turn every advantage to their favor, even establishing fortresses like colonies within the fungal mars. A testament to their resilient and strategic prowess, yet the medal for survival extends beyond the lost wood. In the distant further expanse, new evolutionary pressure are stirring and strange creatures are emerging from convergent paths bringing fresh challenge. Will the queen of Ferdinand Expanse rise to meet this new test? <laughs>